Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running and in my hand I hold the Nike ZoomX Invincible. A lot of hype about this shoe globally and let me tell you right now at home the hype is real. There is a lot going on with this shoe. Now in today's review what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down exactly what this shoe is all about, who it's designed for, go over the outsole, the midsole and the upper and give you all the information at home to who knows, maybe throw this into your shoe rotation. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, like in all my shoe reviews gone by, I do like to touch on the foot type that could be considering this shoe here. Now it is a neutral high mileage shoe. So when we're talking about a neutral foot type, we're talking about something that looks a little bit like this in a static position. So I hold a static foot uh, posture in my hand right through here. So when I lay it flat on a flat surface, you can see there's a high arch and there's a little bit of real estate between the arch and the ground. And for this runner, when they're coming through their gait transition, the pressure will either be through the central part of the foot and they might have a slight tendency to supinate or put a little bit of lateral pressure as they go through to their toe off phase of the gait cycle. The other neutral or stable neutral category we see from time and time again in store is essentially a foot posture that looks something like this, flatter in the arch, and when this runner comes through their gait transition, they still stay relatively stable and the pressure is through the central part of their foot. Now, if you are a runner at home and you do have a tendency to mildly overpronate, where essentially you flatten out that arch and you do track towards your big toe before you release on toe off, I'd be certainly questioning whether the Zoom X Invincible is a shoe for you. Now, in saying that, obviously there's going to be runners out there that do overpronate, they use it, or they're going to be using it, and they may be A-OK. -okay. But because it's so soft, I'd be just questioning whether the support is going to be adequate enough for you, the overpronator out there. So obviously, I encourage people to get fitted to make sure this is going to be appropriate for you at home. Okay guys, let's get to the exciting part about this shoe. Now that is all to do with the engineering. So like all my shoe reviews gone by, we do start from the ground and work our way up. So let's talk all things outsole first. So straight away, you can see at home, this shoe is full ground contact. So what that essentially means is there's rubber from the furthest part of the heel right through to the furthest part of the forefoot through here. So you get plenty of traction, plenty of protection underneath the foot, which is going to be making sure there is no uneven wear on that ZoomX midsole. So a lot of a lot of rubber underneath the foot. A relatively substantial amount of shoe at the base of the heel. Um, and that's a lot to a lot is to do with the cushioning system, which we'll get to in two ticks, but you've got quite a lot of real estate underneath the heel. And then it does narrow through that semi-curved last region through the arch. And then as you come through to the forefoot, you're quite a flared forefoot as well. So there's a lot of purchase area through the front half of this shoe as well. So then we come to the midsole and we've got the Zoom X cushioning system. Now this is hands down, bar none, the softest shoe I have ever run in. And that's saying a bit, I've run in hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of pairs of shoes over the last 15 years. And when I put this shoe on my foot, it just felt crazy soft underneath. Now, that is a good thing and also can be a bad thing depending on what your body is requiring at this point in time. But with the cushioning system being the ZoomX midsole, now this is not the first time I've done this. We've seen ZoomX in uh, the, the Next Percent, the Alpha Flies, um, even Peg Turbos, just to name a few. So this this cushioning system or this this uh, iteration of cushioning system has been um, introduced into Nike's running shoes now for a few years, but they haven't actually put it into a high mileage shoe and jacked it up like they have with the ZoomX Invincible. Now, when we're talking about jacking it up, there is a lot of shoe underneath the foot too. So we have a stack height of 37 millimeters in the heel and 28 millimeters in the forefoot for a drop of nine mil. So there's quite a bit of generosity underneath the foot through there. Now the reason they've gone so high is purely and simply because it is a high mileage shoe. It's your daily trainer. It's designed to spend plenty of hours out on the road at your easy jogging pace. And also when you're really calling out the asset being the cushioning system, you wanna make sure you give it all that you can so that that's why there is so much shoe underneath the foot. As I said, 37 heel and 28 through the forefoot. Now, just touching on obviously what I said earlier, it is a neutral shoe. So when we're talking about neutral shoes, there is no additional arch support placed on that medial side, no dynamic support system. It is the same density on the inside as it is the outside. Now, 
this could be touched on with regards to the upper, but I will call this piece out through here. So this little plastic support system that runs around the back of the heel counter through here, which is strategically placed on top of the midsole. Now that is placed there just to provide a little bit of stability for that heel. So because this cushioning system is really soft and your foot hits the ground, it does compress quite a lot. You wanna make sure your heel stays nice and stable on top of that midsole, hence that little stability plastic system which runs from the lateral heel right around to the medial side of your heel through here. So it might add a few grams weight, but it needs to be placed there because it just will provide a little bit more stability on top of the shoe itself. Now coming to the upper of this shoe. Now, um, this is a very comfortable design. So not only is there's a lot of magic underneath the foot, the shoe itself of the fly knit upper is very comfortable. So what I found with this shoe itself, I was going to be maybe concerned it was going to be a little bit narrow through the forefoot. Now I'm traditionally a D width and I'm running this shoe here in a 9.5D at this point in time. And I sort of fluctuate between 9s and 9.5 depending on the brand. So I'm running a 9.5D width at this point in time and I really like the fit and feel, especially through the forefoot. So I get the perfect amount of width through the front half and also the depth is about bang on for me. I don't like something really boxy where I've got a lot of wriggle room but there's certainly enough space there to get a bit of movement with my toes but certainly not sacrifice with support. As you come through to the arch area through here, there's nothing really suggesting there's any overlays. The Nike or the half Nike tick has just essentially been strategically placed there, more for cosmetic reasons, I believe. But on the inside of the tongue, there is that gusseted system. So you do have that connection from the tongue to the midsole on the medial side and the tongue to the midsole on that lateral side. The other thing I'd like to call out is the tongue isn't you know, ridiculously thick, but it's certainly not thin. Um, so I tend to find, you know, maybe if it was a little bit thinner, I personally might like it a fraction more, but there's nothing really to say that it's not going to be comfortable for a lot of people out there. It's certainly going to feel nice and protected on top of your arch, and there's plenty of ventilation paneling at the bottom half of the tongue. So you're going to get that airflow through your foot, um, which is essentially a huge requirement of this shoe. Being a mild shoe, you want to make sure your foot doesn't swell too much inside the shoe. So ventilation plays a key part and you do get plenty of ventilation through the fly knit construction in this design. Coming back to the heel counter, um, as we touched on, it does have that little plastic system which sits on top of the midsole, but we do have an internal heel counter on play as well. So not only are you getting protection underneath or around the lower border of your heel, you do get plenty of protection up the walls of your heel as well with that internal heel counter, which is great. And the collar on the inside, again, I like it when shoes just get it bang on. And in my opinion, I think they've nailed the amount of foam they've got on the inside of this shoe through here. So it's certainly not, they're not overdoing it by any stretch of the imagination. There's just enough there to really dial in and get that fit nice and secure at the back of your heel, but provide the comfort that you require as well. And the last thing to call out is there is the additional eyelet at the back through here too. So for those of you out there that prefer to run with a heel lock, you do have that ability to dial that in for yourself with your lacing system as well. Okay guys, now while we're talking about the upper, let's touch on the widths. Now being the first of its kind, more often than not, a brand will only release a shoe in one width. So in the men's, we have a D width, which is standard, and in the ladies, we have a B, which is their standard width as well. Okay guys, wrapping up the Zoom X Invincible, it is the softest shoe I have ever run in, bar none. The closest comparison in, from my experiences right now is potentially the 1080 from New Balance and I'll throw the Hoka Clifton in there as well as a soft everyday mileage running shoe. Um, but still, I do think this sits on its own with the cushioning system on offer underneath the foot. Now, just to give you a bit of feedback from my own personal experience, I am a mild over pronator and I can use stable neutral shoes. And with this shoe here, when I was running at around five minutes per kilometer to 5.15 per kilometer, I just didn't feel as stable as I would like in my everyday mileage shoe. But when I picked up the pace, I was running in and around your 4.30s to 4.45s, I felt very happy inside this shoe. Now, would I buy a shoe to do some shorter, longer, uh, shorter runs at that speed? Well, there's a lot of other shoes I'd probably potentially run in, but I could certainly see this being a great training shoe for those people who do on their longer runs happen to run at a slightly quicker pace. Um, but just keep in mind, again, I'm a mild over pronator. Um, and if you happen to be a neutral um, runner and you do looking, uh, you are looking for something super soft and you might be pushing anything out over that five minutes per kilometer, um, don't rule this out. This could be a shoe for you.
Guys, thanks for tuning in and listening to my take on the Zoom X Invincible. If you have any questions about this shoe or you got some feedback on it because you've ran in it or tried it on, drop in the comments field below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, guys, hit the red button, stay notified, and we'll keep pumping out as many shoe reviews as we possibly can for you, the runners at home. And until next time, stay safe, happy running, be kind to each other, and we shall see you on the road. Take care. Yeah.